Wow, has it really been nine months since I've posted a video? Wow, I'm lost for words. No, I'm just kidding. But no more excuses. I need to get going on this matchless G3L. Yeah, it's been a long time. And I remember nine months ago I had a New Year's resolution. And I was planning to be very far with this build on the matchless. It hasn't happened. Uh, but as of now, no further excuses. It's time to really get going. So let's start off with part one on this 1949 Matchless G3L. But you know, that's a good question. Where to begin? I have no experience whatsoever working on this type of motorcycle from the war or just post-war era. And um, so I have to determine for myself, where do I start? Well, let's start all the way at the beginning. Let's find the frame number, let's find the engine number, the gearbox number, and first of all, exactly define which year bike we're working on, just to make sure that when we need parts or advice, or look into technical data later on, we're looking at the same bike. So let's start there first. First, let's start off with the frame number. Now I've been putting on a few parts on this frame over the past one or two days. But even so, we can still find the frame number, which is located here, behind the battery box, here on the bottom corner of the frame. Here we have the frame number. Now my frame number says 38873. And if I'm correct, this is probably, and with emphasis I say probably, a 1949 frame. So it's a post-war frame. Why do I say probably? Because it's an approximate date. Uh, as far as I've been able to research, the production year runs from September of one year to September of the year after. So this number, this frame number, fits in between the range of numbers that were produced from September 1949 to September 1950. But because it's a relatively early number in this range of numbers, it's estimated that this is a 1949 frame. So that's with regards to the frame number for this specific matchless. Right, now on to the engine. Now the matchless G3L has a 350cc, or to be more exact, 344cc, single cylinder two-stroke engine. And the previous owner um, told me that the engine is a wartime model. Now, there's no engine serial number or identification number stamped onto the case. There's only a number stamped on the cylinder head. So, and I looked everywhere, and normally you have it here on the engine case, the uh, serial number, identification number, from which you can determine which year it has been built. So I have no clue at this moment. So I'll have to investigate more to determine from exactly which production year this engine comes from. But if it's the case that the previous owner mentioned this is a wartime engine, that means I have a wartime engine in a civilian post-war era frame onto the gearbox. Now we come to the gearbox, which is a Boermann four-speed gearbox, which wasn't manufactured by AMC or Matchless, but by a different company called Boermann, which made many more gearboxes for other types of motorcycles. Now here we see the specific number on the gearbox, the one CPM1112. Now with all due respect, I've searched the web for this type of identification number and the only thing I can find out is that the CP is a Boermann gearbox model which they made and the M stands for the 350cc engine version. 
That's all I can figure out. What the 11 and the 12 stands for, I have no idea, so I need to do a little bit of further research. That's it for the gearbox. Well, now we know we're dealing with a probable 1949 matchless G3L frame fitted with probably a wartime era engine and wartime era gearbox. Now the question is, are we going to make this into a civilian bike or are we going to build a military version of this bike? I've decided to let the frame lead the build, which means that I'm going to be building the post-World War II civilian version of the G3L. As you can see, the frame, but I can tell you already, also the mudguards and the tank have the original black color uh, as the civilian post-war G3L had. Now this did not influence my decision on going for either the military version or the civilian version. But my feeling says that if you want to build the military version then do it authentically with all the parts from the World War II era, which I do not have. So for me the decision was easy, we're going for the post-war civilian version. Now that we've made that decision, what's my next step? Well as you might recall from my video, yes I know, already nine months ago, I bought this bike all in parts and the previous owner said it's more or less complete, 95%. So what I first need to determine is exactly which parts came with the bike, in what condition are they, are they original, which parts are missing, which parts need to be replaced, and which parts need to be repaired. So let's start off with this tedious process of defining all the parts that came with this bike. Now before I forget, I think it's important to tell you that I also searched the web to find as much information as possible on this motorcycle. Every technical manual, websites, clubs, photographs, videos, I've gathered them all and put them into a separate folder on my laptop. So that will provide me with enough material to at least start to understand this motorcycle. Now it's not comparable to the Kawasaki uh, that I bought as a whole bike, tore apart and put back together again for two reasons. First of all, with the Kawasaki being a total motorcycle, I had a reference point from which I could work. That's point one. Here the motorcycle came in parts. I do not have a reference point. Yes, a friend of mine, Ted, also has a matchless G3L, so I can uh, go over to his place, make the photograph, study his bike, and use that as a reference. I will also be joining the Dutch Matchless Club, um, and I think there are people there, they have much and much more knowledge than I do on this bike, can help me on my way. But even so, it's more difficult to build up a bike if you don't have a reference. Second point is that the material, the documentation available from this bike and especially the details of the drawing, drawings is totally different than modern day motorcycles and I'm comparing it to the 1982-81 Kawasaki 750 Limited which I rebuilt only using a manual and studying the web. Now this is a different story because the technical information that I've been able to gather is not as detailed. So sometimes you need to guess. So on the way into this build I'm going to start off with this information and gather more information and expertise and probably join in other people into this build that have much more experience working on this older type of motorcycle. Just something that I wanted to let you know. The first thing I've done is photograph each single part 
that came with the bike. I need to study these parts again to see which I can repair, which need repair, which parts are authentic, which need to be replaced, and which parts am I missing. All these parts needed to be connected to parts numbers. So that's an important step I'm going to do in the next video. Make a total overview of all the parts I have, including the parts numbers. See you in the next video.